and burnt through. What does the word adventure mean? By definition, it is an unusual and exciting or daring experience. A risky undertaking. 15 months in 15 countries. We are in northern Argentina, about to embark on our longest and most challenging off-road route to date. Over 600 kilometers through the high plains of the Andes, all above 14,000 feet of elevation. Yeah, I'd say this is an adventure. Attempting a route of this length and remoteness is not something we would usually tackle solo. That said, our only friends in the area with a rig capable of joining us are heading north. We're not even at the cool part yet. Our truck has a couple band-aid fixes due to lack of parts availability in Argentina. We may have found a break in the storms of the off-season. We're hopeful, because flash floods in the desert are no joke. Stacked up with potential landslides, washouts, and having to find our own track, it has the makings of a one-of-a-kind endeavor. This will perhaps be a defining moment for us, either one of triumph and completion, or one of defeat and rescue. After our last stop for gas for potentially the next 650-ish kilometers, we're making camp on the outskirts of town to acclimatize to the altitude and for one last night with our new friends. to make new friends. Yeah. It's always sad when they leave. Yeah. We'll share the high plains with miners for the first few hundred kilometers. Then we're pretty much on our own. The immediacy of feeling alone was shared without words. A landscape of salt flats and volcanoes yearning for the green of a single tree. This feels like nowhere else we've been. And that's really exciting. The Quechua word Puna means highland over 3,000 meters above sea level. It is dominated by Andean peaks that rise to heights of four and even 6,000 meters. Outside of Tibet, the Altiplano, Spanish for high plain, is the most extensive high plateau on Earth. Enter the Desierto del Diablo, the Devil's Desert. Truly the rocks and sand here look scorched by the sun. If this part of the route is Mars, how many other planets will we encounter? We 
We break the silence of the desert with 47 years of metal and bolts. Every rattle is a reminder not only of the age of our truck, but what's holding it together. I cannot believe how blue the sky is. I have never seen the sky this blue. It's like electrically blue. It's like crazy. So, so beautiful. This route requires at least 650 kilometers of range, much of which is through steep climbs or deep sand. Not exactly the most fuel efficient terrain. Hopefully, our 160 liters of reserve will be enough. Our solitude is broken by our imagination, as if the memories from the inhabitants of this old railway station are among us. A place where we get to ask ourselves our favorite question. Why? Why did they live here? Why did they leave? And what was it like? Too bad, though. It's actually not. Cool. Day two in the Altiplano. Trying to shake the lingering headache from the elevation, we're breaking camp right after coffee. We didn't know it yet, but the crescendo of views and surprises would reach a sharp peak today. It always makes us wonder when we drive through a town and don't see a single person. Today, that was the remote railroad town of Tolar Grande. Most of the inhabitants of the Puna region left after the closure of the nearby Minahulia sulfur mine. and feels like you are absolutely in the middle of nowhere, there's a mine. <laughs> and said mine has not only free showers, it has free Wi-Fi and safe parking. It's like a oasis. oasis. <laughs> Hot showers in the middle of the freaking desert at 4,000 meters. It's just nuts. Okay, and you know what happens when life gives you lemons? You make lemonade. Right, lemonada. <laughs> lemonada. I'm gonna need those lemons. We're not just squeezing 
lemon juice into a container here, folks. We're, we're making Argentinian, Argentine, Argentine lemonada. So the reason why we're making lemonada is because the we needed to put a leash on the booze hounds. So now we're drinking mocktails. <laughs> I don't know how much, so we're gonna do a couple scoops. Oh, that went in burner. Plus water. <laughs> Lemonada. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> nice and fresh. That is really good. That's impressive. This is Cono de Arita a cone of black lava and salt. It dominates the Salar de Arizaro, which is known for being the biggest salt flat in Argentina and the third largest in the world. Its name Arita was given by the ancient Aboriginal people who lived in the area. In the Aymara language, it means sharp. My lips are cracking, it's so dry. It's so dry. But, like, look at that. With its height of over 200 meters, for many, wow. it is the most perfect natural cone in the world. Day three on the Puna off-road route. It just keeps getting better, it seems. I don't really know how to explain this place other than I feel like a Martian. <laughs> yeah, day three feels a heck of a lot better than day one. We have finally acclimatized, so finally feels okay. You can kind of breathe a little bit better. First two days are always a little like, what are we doing with our lives? But it feels good now. Now we're just on Mars. <laughs> if you're wondering how the roads are out here, well, just listen to the truck. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is enough to drive someone crazy. Yeah, I really would have uh, appreciated those Dobbinson's shocks right now that are sitting in Florida. Despite feeling like we're in a washing machine of nuts and bolts, the landscape keeps a smile on our faces. The challenges of the day are still ahead of us. Time for lunch. You got any teeth left? Teeth left? Teeth left. Just a couple. I'm gonna knock some more air out of the front tires. Doesn't look bumpy in the camera, but man, it makes our suspension feel rigid. Man, it's really pretty out here. It's beautiful. How do I do this to myself? What did you do? Nothing. Tw twisted the seat. I always twist it. We don't need seatbelts though, because we're not going fast enough. <laughs> Choosing a vehicle for an adventure like this can be a difficult undertaking. It has to be a comfortable home, an off-road machine, an on-road machine, and for us, a production studio. Our Land Cruiser chassis may be old, yet there's a big difference between worn out and worn in. Some things, however, have a destined lifespan, an end date. Hopefully, we can prolong this funeral. What a 
a very strange landscape. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Yeah, like look, like driving on like sand. Yeah, no, at 40, what, oh, 3,900 meters? 3,400 meters. meters. Just down from 45. Our misfire is back. So, what we're hoping is that the plug wire burnt through the electrical tape and we can fix it again. This one doesn't, that one doesn't look bad. There we go, this one's been burnt through. Put new stuff on and, and we really need new spark plug wires, but you can't get them in Argentina. Oh! but you can kind of see right there. It's where the wire's been burnt through, so it's grounding out on the inside of the block. Okay. Still misfiring. Taped up a couple other spark plugs. Back to normal. There we go. <laughs> Man! <laughs> ISO spark plug. Spark people. plug wires. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Seriously, like the only way we can get them is in Chile. We're getting them shipped from home. And like getting them shipped from home is gonna take weeks. <laughs> and a lot of money. And a lot of money, because Argentine import tax is insane. Shipping is crazy. So I think maybe we'll have to just go to Chile. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good job, Sunday. I'm sorry we're holding you together with tape. What felt like a victory would soon leave our trophies in the basement as our truck's gremlins from the past join us on the Altiplano. survives out here. Can't blame him if that's what you're eating, dang. He's got pretty big teeth. For chewing on all that, chewing on rocks. all that sagebrush. And then all of a sudden there's a green oasis with all the Wanakos or Vicuñas? We're not sure exactly. No, these are the Vicuñas. These are Vicuñas? Oh, it's like a freaking golf course. <laughs> it's so weird. You guys are the smart ones. Oh, look at them with their ears back. Oh. Oh, we're... You guys don't have to run. We're not smart. More problems. More problems. The truck just turned off. Uh, we're going up a hill. What the hell? Ugh. I wish we had a Toyota fuel pump. Well, we're a suspect of the same fuel problems that we were dealing with in Mexico, which seems to be a plague of ours that has come back, even with our in-tank fuel pump. It's the same kind of thing. Just gets a little hot. We got up to like 208, and yeah, it was just like duh, 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 duh. So we're gonna let things cool down and hopefully be on our way. All right, a little 15 minute cool down sesh. Let's see how we do. Voila. All right, so our lesson. Never shall I ever put a non-Toyota fuel pump in a Toyota. <laughs> also, I will run all of my fuel lines very far away from the exhaust. Well, that's the third time we've stalled out. 
could be the altitude now. Honestly, very likely. All right, Sunday, you've been here before. This is like 4,600 meters. You've been to 49. You love it. You love adventure. You're in Argentina. I don't know, like 16 countries or something. You can do this! Woo! Oh man, we're in low range now. Trying to use the gears to our advantage. Yep. I would like to get there before so does I. <laughs> if you're enjoying this film, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already. It's free and it really does help us out. We made it. We made it to the summit. In low range. <laughs> In low range. I don't care. We got here. We got here. Yeah. Everything looks normal now. All right. Now we go down. Now we go down. Sunday deserves to go down. This, uh, this is where you uh, pay your respects to the land by leaving it your balls. Thankfully, these issues are at least familiar. The demon you know is better than the demon you don't. Halfway through this route, we reach the outpost of Antofagasta. The fuel station reports running out of petrol frequently, and while we don't need it, we put a very expensive 20 liters in the tank. Now off to find camp for the night, we couldn't have expected the surprise that awaited us. Unexpected surprise. This is very cool. Black volcanic sand and volcanoes, of course. Yay! <laughs> Fresh lemonade and charcuterie. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't fall. <laughs> Me too. Cheers. It's really nice though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't look that dumb. Camping next to volcanoes has become quite a theme for us. This feels like a textbook lava field, and the exact volcano I drew when I was four years old.
Well, that was an absolutely stellar camp. Top notch, ticked all the boxes. Time to go find another one. We found an unexpected section of pavement. Thing is, we don't know how long it is, but we're airing it up. We might have to air down in like 10 minutes. <laughs> we'll find out. We got about 20 minutes out of the pavement before seeing one of our favorite signs. Often these 4x4 only signs are fairly uneventful. This one, however, would prove to be more than worthy. washboard I have ever seen. We've been reduced to 12 kilometers an hour. It's just like five to six inch corrugations, but they were obviously made by tiny tires, so our 35s just don't even fit in them at all, so just get beat up. We're at wildlife viewing speed. Yeah, where are the tape piers at? Wow, this is so cool though. So I can't. This is Piedra Pomes. Formed by wind racing through the ancient Pumas stone from the intense volcanic activity in the area, this is a testimony to nature, the principal player in the creation of unusual and rare masterpieces. Their nuances challenge the palette of the painter. The sun in a constant competition with the dominant blue horizon. The dust settles, and it's the shadow's turn to tell the story. A route like this deserves a celebration. <laughs> this is the coolest place ever. Ooh, an IPA. <laughs> An IPA. We're um, at 3,200 meters, so I'm hoping the IPA won't feel that scary. This is honestly insane. Like, yeah, this route just. We keep saying that all these like films should be like, why? Why is this not a movie set for like Star Wars or just like any Dune? Dune. We're like, <laughs> spice everywhere. <laughs> it's so cool. So cool. Ooh, that's fresh. You know what's cool? I think the uh, inside of the fridge is the only place in the Chinook that's not dusty. <laughs> Thank God.
have to go in four-wheel drive today? <laughs> I'm going to go with no. No? We hauled up those sand hills last night in two-wheel drive. Yeah, that's pretty nice. What a nice place. Like, if you like rocks, there isn't a better place you could be ever. Anyway. <laughs> it's just like rock paradise. Yeah. Jumps everywhere. <laughs> like a trophy truck breakfast. That's a pretty decent sand hill we gotta climb. <laughs> gonna, gonna need some horse purse to get up there. <laughs> All the horsies. The sand is deep and rutted. With pedal to the floor in second gear, four wheel drive, we're still losing ground. At this elevation, there's about 40% less oxygen. For any overland rig, let alone our V6, this is a challenge. We got pushed far off to the side and had to drop into low range, but we made it.
right, that's us. Classic can tell on camera, but that is steep and slightly off camber. Once again, the landscape transforms. This must be a distant cousin of the Sonoran Desert. Now this, if we're lucky, will be the hidden jewel of this route. Hidden jewel? Perhaps. But the best jewels are hidden in the mountains and require a lot of digging. No way! Seriously! It's like almost a shock! Oh my gosh! That's amazing! Wow! It's a freaking hot river! No way! Before this route, our sequence of events and happenings made us feel like we weren't where we were supposed to be. And we asked ourselves why. Thankfully, in moments like this, we're reminded of divine timing. The weather, the solitude, the micro miracles, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. Speaking of micro miracles, seeing a flock of condors ravage a vicuña, however brutal, is amazing. These birds have wingspans reported up to 10 feet or three meters wide. They are massive. I know, like that one just bubbling hot water out. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. What the heck? Yeah, you could definitely sit down there. What are all these? It's crazy looking. I don't know. What the heck? It looks like beans. Oh yeah! <laughs> A hot waterfall river, what the heck? Matthew has been wanting to find a natural coast ring this entire trip. For many countries. It's hot, yeah. <laughs> 
washed over by condors. So wine from Cafe Ete. It's the Toronto's grape, which is the grape only grown in that region. It's from La Bogadi Bodeguita, which is like a little winery. It was like handmade, obviously. Like small batch. Small batch, yeah. Oh gosh, it smells so good. It's pretty cold this morning. But what an amazing blessing to have hot water to do your dishes with. We're still up pretty high. It's 3,500 meters here in this crazy little desert volcanic oasis. We got a crazy idea last night. <laughs> Since there's so much boiling water here. We thought we'd try and boil some eggs. Uh, have you ever hard boiled an egg in a geyser? Well, me neither. Okay, so there's a pretty decent rock in the middle, so hopefully it doesn't like bump around. Yeah, and hopefully we can find it at the end. Do you think here or like right there? There's no, I think here. Right where, in where the... it's boiling. Okay, well, you can see like these jets coming right up. All right. One goes in. Good luck, little egg. Oh! We're gonna need to get our ladle to get them out. Okay, that's fine. We'll All right, let's time it. What are we at here? It's 8.35. Where did that other one go? It like went into Oh, I can see it, I can see it. It's a beauty! We were just looking at this rock and realized it's a horse. That is so cool. That's so neat. What the heck? Despite the hiccups of our old rig, it seems it has the perfect wheelbase for the steep and narrow switchbacks. Sand dune is bigger than the mountains. That thing's gotta be 
4,900, 4,500 meters. We've been feeling totally blessed with the weather so far for traveling in the off season. Yet noticing the looming cloud cover in the distance, we're recognizing that window is starting to close. River crossing and a roadblock. A roadblock. Okay. That guy does not look like he wants to move. No. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. I know the sand is nice and soft. We made it to Las Papas, the final canyon. We read on some post that there's over a hundred river crossings. <laughs> we will see. For the few residents left in Las Papas, this is their fastest route to civilization. It's easy to imagine how after a big rain this would be treacherous or impassable. It's already difficult to see the way. We'll see how deep these crossings might become. I don't think the uh, tracks will be hard to find now yeah. <laughs> after 20 side by sides have been through. This crossing caught us by surprise, with the river rising up over the rock slider on the driver's side. Thankfully, the Falcon tires found traction and pulled us out easily. Filming river crossings is hilarious because you gotta go get your filmmaker. Sounds terrifying. You ready? Yeah. 
Oh my god. You good? Oh god. Yeah. This route has challenged our mental fortitude, our perseverance, and our ability to find joy in being tested. Views that feel like a reward, and a finale filled with inner accomplishment. The perfect recipe for a real adventure. This is the new proposed dam. I don't know what it'll mean for this route, but I hope it stays open. Good job, babe. We're out of the canyon. That took a lot of teamwork. It took a lot of time. I'm impressed. <laughs> Alright, now let's see if uh, we have enough gas to get to the gas station. Yes. Our, uh, this is the real test. Yeah. Aha! We've made it! Wow! <laughs> That is awesome. Yeah. I don't know if we should speak so soon. We haven't filled up. But <laughs> right. right. Oh, but that Close. is a good looking station. Yep. So it looks like we're going to get around 90 liters. Yeah, which seems strange. I would have thought we used way more than that, but. Maybe we are like a little bit more fuel efficient than we, <laughs> than we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. Okay. Since you stuck around to the end, you get to find out if our egg actually cooked or if I'm about to eat a raw egg. <laughs> oh God. That's Whoa. not a good sign. <laughs> okay, you can cook a soft boiled egg in a geyser, <laughs> but it might take more than an hour for a hard boiled egg. <laughs> Sorry, little egg. I hope by now we've earned your subscription. This trip is far from over. We'll see you next time.